When I competed in bodybuilding contests, oh God, let's see, how long ago would it be? Oh, I guess it's almost just about half a century ago. It's been a long time. I competed in my 20s a long time ago, but uh, I can tell you that uh, when I competed in bodybuilding, my I had the same lunch for, let me see, probably 25 years from the time I started all the way even a little bit past my bodybuilding competition days, I had the same thing for lunch for 25 years. Now, my lunch was very simple. It consisted of two foods, cottage cheese and tuna fish. I would take a, uh, a little tub of cottage cheese. Sometimes I actually took it to the beach with me. I'd take a, you know, take a blanket, lie out in the sun there in Venice or Santa Monica, and I'd eat my lunch right on the beach. I'd have a little... Uh, little tub of, of, uh, of uh, low-fat cottage cheese, and then I'd have a can of, of water-packed tuna, which I would drain any anything you know left in there, any oil. Well, actually, I wouldn't, some of it, sometimes I would use the oil-packed tuna. If I use the oil-packed tuna, I would drain the oil out before I ate it, and I would uh, usually drink this. Uh, this would be my lunch. Uh, if I wasn't, if I was if I didn't have a contest coming up, I would uh, I would drink it with a uh, kind of a liquid yogurt called kefir, K E F I R, which is basically liquid yogurt. And uh, it came in uh, different great flavors, peach and vanilla. It was really a pretty good breakfast. I would have to cut it out prior to a contest. I would cut out that particular. I'd leave in the tuna, but I'd cut out the cottage cheese and kefir about two to three months before a contest when I was trying to lower my body fat levels. But I want to talk a little bit today about cottage cheese because I don't see cottage cheese listed in a lot of the current bodybuilding diets. It's almost like a forgotten food, which I think is a big mistake because cottage cheese is a great source of protein. What co- You've probably heard, well, maybe you didn't hear, but I'll tell you, milk protein consists of two major proteins. One of them is called casein. The other one's called whey. Uh, 80% of the protein content of milk is casein. The other one, uh, 20% is whey. Now, the difference between the two is that whey is a, a rapidly acting protein that is rapidly digested, and it, it, it releases its amino acid contents, peaks in the blood in about an hour. Now, casein is a slow-acting protein, and the reason for that is uh, when it gets in, when you eat casein, it actually curds in your stomach. And actually, basically, when you eat casein, it turns into cottage cheese in your body because cottage cheese is basically casein. But it turns into, because it becomes like curds in your stomach, it takes a little longer to digest. And also, another reason why casein takes a long time to digest is because it, it has it has peptides, uh, natural casein peptides called casiomorphins, not morphine, the drug, casiomorphins, casiomorphins, actually delay the digestive process. So the net effect is that casein protein is released over about a seven hour period. You know, it's a t- kind of a time release protein compared to the 90 minute peak time of whey. And that's tremendous advantage because even though the whey might stimulate muscle protein synthesis a little bit better than casein because of the more rapid release of essential amino acids, the the slow trickle of amino acids that results from consuming casein or cottage cheese help, actually has an anti-catabolic effect. It helps to make because because muscle growth is a combination of anabolic and anti-catabolic effects. So the anti-catabolic effect is, uh, in other words, the prevention of excess muscle protein breakdown is very important for muscle. So uh, as I said, cottage cheese, they actually have casein supplements, but you know, some of these tend to be, you know, the isolated casein, uh, the the best one's called micellar casein. That's the natural form of casein. They also have uh, casein, uh, calcium casinate, sodium casinate. I don't recommend sodium or calcium casinate. It's not that it's bad for you, but it's not real. It, it, it's not metabolized like natural casein, because sodium and, and, and uh, 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 what's it? Sodium and calcium casinate, they act more like whey. In other words, they're more rapidly digested. So you lose a lot of the, let's say, extended release effect of casein if you use those cheap forms of casein. The only kind of casein supplement to use would be something called micellar casein, which is actually natural casein, which is the slow digesting one. Or 
you could save your money and buy a much, much less ex- uh, expensive form of casein, which is cod- cottage cheese. And cottage cheese is made from the curds of various t- uh, levels of, of milk, including non-fat, reduced, or regular milk. It comes in different curd sizes, small, medium, large, and it's available in cr- cream, whipped, lactose-free, reduced sodium, or sodium-free. Uh, when I ate cottage cheese, I would uh, usually had the low-fat cottage cheese, and sometimes I would have just the, the, the regular cottage cheese that included a little bit more fat, especially if I, again, wasn't preparing for a contest. Uh, uh, it's, uh, cottage cheese is just it's loaded with nutrition. A half cup of low-fat or 1% milk-fat cottage cheese uh, it contains only 81 calories, 14 grams of protein, only 3 grams of carbohydrate, 1 gram of fat, 29% of the requirement of B12, 19% of the requirement of selenium, 5% of calcium, and so on and so forth. It also contains vitamin B6, choline, zinc, and copper. The uh, carb, the carb content of cottage cheese about 3% carb, and it, it's mostly lactose. Uh, so that's the milk sugar. Some people who are lactose intolerant maybe would have a problem eating cottage cheese. I don't know for sure, but I think they now have cottage cheese. I again, I haven't really looked that closely, but I think they actually have lactose-free cottage cheese. So that that would be the type of cottage cheese to eat if you do have any problems with milk, sugar, or lactose. Uh, uh, sometimes the cottage cheese tends to be a little bit higher in sodium, which could be a problem for people who have existing high blood pressure. So, you know, you do want to, uh, in that case, you want to par- purchase the uh, low-sodium cottage cheese. Or if you're worried about sodium holding water, get the low-sodium cottage cheese. But the really interesting, the, the protein is what's really impressive about cottage cheese because 70% of the calories in cottage cheese come from protein, and it's mostly casein protein. That's the slow-acting protein and very anti-catabolic. So uh, now how do they make cottage cheese? It starts they, It starts with a curdle milk by adding an acidic substance like lime juice or vinegar to warm milk. As the acidity of milk increases, the curds of casein protein separate from the whey or the liquid part of the milk. And once the curd is solidified, it's cut into pieces and cooked until more moisture is released. It's then washed to remove the acidity and drained to remove the moisture. The result is a sweet curd that can be easily crumbled, cottage cheese. So as I said, cottage cheese is mostly casein. Now, what are the benefits of cottage cheese? It's very good for weight loss diets. A 2012 study followed people who maintained a diet that included high-protein foods like cottage cheese for a year, and it showed that the diet helped decrease body weight an average of 6.2 pounds in females and 3.1 pounds in uh, males. Uh, High intakes of protein have been shown to increase feelings of fullness or satiety, Uh, so it uh, it reduces your appetite, so it makes it easy to stay on the diet. Uh, uh, Studies show that cottage cheese seems to stimulate the same feelings of fullness as eggs, which also, you know, tend to lower your appetite. Uh, As I said, uh, that leads to less caloric intake and greater weight loss. Uh, Cottage cheese is a good source of calcium. Uh, So some studies show that calcium uh, is related to fat loss. I don't think they're very good, so I wouldn't really look at that as a great feature. Again, cottage cheese is very good for bodybuilding because of the high-quality protein it contains. Uh, uh, as I said, casein accounts for 80% of the, uh, of the protein content of uh, cottage cheese. It's almost pure casein. And uh, if you take in cottage cheese before going to bed, the casein in the cottage cheese will be released over seven hours. So you get a constant, it's almost have, like having an intravenous supply of amino acids. Some studies have shown that uh, ingesting casein prior to sleep actually helps increase uh, anabolic effects in muscle, especially if you work out at night prior to going to sleep. Now, other studies have shown no, that this effect isn't true, but it seems to hold true, especially for older people who are over 40. So it's a good idea. If you feel like eating something before bed, have some uh, casein. It, I mean, I'm sorry, not casein. Well, you can have a casein supplement, or the cheaper way to go is cottage cheese. You could put a little fruit on it if you don't like the bland taste of cottage cheese. When I ate cottage cheese, I just ate it right out of the you know tub it came in. I just spooned it in. I didn't put anything on it. 
casein also helps to prevent, uh, or dairy products in general, help to prevent insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is the precursor to type 2 diabetes. Uh, they think it might be the calcium content uh, in uh, because uh, when you give uh, uh, calcium to rats, it, it, it reduces insulin resistance in, in uh, rats that are fed a high-fat diet. Of course, the calcium helps increase bone strength. The, uh, the uh, selenium content of cottage cheese offers uh, anti-cancer effects and potent antioxidant effects. And selenium is needed for the production of thyroid hormone. So, uh, you know, there's different ways to eat cottage cheese. Some people, you know, put it into pancakes, waffles. They mix it with fruit. They put granola on top of it. They add it to smoothies, this and that. You know, some people like to add it to scrambled eggs. There's all kinds. Like I say, if you have lactose intolerance, uh, you got to be a little bit careful of uh, of uh, cottage cheese unless you can find one that's lactose free. Uh, so basically, that's it. I just wanted to give a little a mention here of cottage cheese because of the reason, a fact that I just don't see it mentioned very often when I see, uh, when I look at some of these diets of bodybuilders and fitness people and athletes, when I look at their diets online, I notice that a lot of them don't have any mention of cottage cheese, which to me is a big mistake because cottage cheese is one of the better fitness cheeses. As, as I said, it's low in fat, but it's extremely high in protein, 70% of the calories from protein. And the protein is that casein protein, which has several unique properties that are very important for helping you build and maintain muscle. So consider adding ca- uh, cottage cheese to your diet. And, you know, if you, if you uh, want it, the best time to eat it, especially if you work out at night, is right before going to sleep. It'll actually, uh, the amino acids in cottage cheese will actually help uh, promote the release of growth hormone which occurs 90 minutes after you fall asleep. So if you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, ergogenic aids, effective fat loss techniques, hormonal therapy, women's health and fitness, and many other topics, subscribe to my Applied Metabolics, www.appliedmetabolics.com. It's 30 to 45 pages every month. It comes out on the first of the month. There's no ads. It's just pure information evidence-based information based on my over 60 years of experience and study that can't be matched by anyone. Uh, so it's, it's written in plain English. I have over 45 years of writing experience. I know how to write for the public. Uh, any technical terms are translated immediately, so you don't need to reach for a medical dictionary or anything. It's very understandable. <clears throat> as long as you know how to read, you'll, you will, uh, you'll get a lot of benefit from uh, applied metabolics. And even if you don't know how to read, you can use one of those read, you know, read text programs that are available free on the internet or read you the whole thing where you don't even have to uh, read it yourself. So uh, again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, send me an email. I'll send you an invitation to join my private uh, Facebook, uh, Applied Metabolics Facebook page. Each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, and general health. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage where current subscribers only can send me short questions, anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics, or any other questions that pertain to nutrition, exercise, and I will answer them as a uh, appreciation of your subscription to Applied Metabolics. This, of course, only applies to current subscribers to Applied Metabolics. Uh, So what else can I say? Uh, I think that's about it, really. Uh, oh yeah, well, oh, if you uh, if you think my videos are any value, by the way, please let others know. You know, it's uh, it's all word of mouth. You know, I mean, uh, there's no fancy graphics in my videos or anything like that. There's no cartoons. Uh, you know, and I don't paint pictures of myself to show muscles and that kind of crap. But I do give you 100% honest information that you could count on as being absolute truth. Unlike about 98% of the other videos on the YouTube related to nutrition health, a lot of which is just garbage BS or just thinly disguised ads to sell products. The only product I mentioned in my videos, as you noticed, is my Applied applied Metabolics publication because I think it has great benefit for anybody involved in fitness and health. So, you know, please let others know about this channel. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. And thank you for listening. Have a good day.